So we made a terrarium on this channel a few days ago. That one right there, what did we call it? The chipped chimney terrarium. I mentioned briefly while we were making that terrarium that there's one thing that I hate, that I despise more than anything that comes on what seems like every, you know, grow light or terrarium or anything like that that you buy on like Amazon and places like that. And it's those built-in timers. Hold on, let me get a shot of it while I talk about it. It's these things right here. It's these built-in timers. I went over it when I was building the terrarium, which I'll show you while I'm talking about this because it'll be funner than looking at the actual plug there. So I went over why I hated those uh, timers so much um, when I was building the terrarium, but it has to do with automation. So let me show you, let me give you an example. Now, if you were just gonna put this terrarium on your you know, kitchen shelf or whatever like that, and you wanted to plug it in, you wanted to turn it on and you wanted to have it automatically you know, come back on 24 hours later, or however, however this timer works. Let's see, I don't even know, because I haven't even looked. Um, yeah, you can set between four, eight and 12 hours. You have no control over like what time it comes on. Um, if the power turns off or if, you know, the power in your house gets turned off, that's going to reset. So you'll have to, you know, wait again till 6 a.m. or whenever you have that thing automatically coming on, you'll have to look at your clock, you know, look at your phone and turn it on. As soon as that, as that time comes, hit the button to make sure it comes on 12 hours again later. It's just not really intuitive. A lot of people have things like Google Home and Alexa and all that kind of automation stuff these days. I personally love using that kind of stuff. And I'll turn the lights off using, I use Google Home for my automation. Hey Google, turn the plant room lights off. Got okay. it, turning off two lights. So at this Sorry, point, it all like is looking good, right? right the terrarium went off just like it was supposed to. So now let's turn the plant lights back on. Hey Google, turn the plant room lights on. You can't really tell. I thought it'd be a little bit more dramatic, but this light didn't turn on. I'll prove it to you by showing underneath that. And the reason that this light didn't turn on is because this has to be recycled every time the power goes off. So every time the power in this thing gets unplugged, this, um, this will be reset. And we don't want that. I'm basically going to replace that switch with, um, with its own even more basic switch. Let me actually show you what I'm talking about. I thought I was gonna have to order one of these, but another one of those little magical moments I'm always talking about was the fact that this just sort of showed up the other day. But this right here is what you're gonna to wanna to get. It's like $5 on Amazon. It's called, it's just called like a manual on off lamp switch or like an inline manual switch. It doesn't really matter what it's called. Get a good look at it. And if you type in um, like on off switch or lamp switch or manual switch. You'll see something like that pull up. And while we're at it, I'll also show you my cool little, uh, get yourself one of these while you're out there picking up your manual switches. This is another little investment that only costs like 20 or $30. And I can't tell you how, you know, awesome it is to have all of these little bits. And besides all of the little bits, the coolest part about this whole little setup is I can obviously unscrew anything I ever need to but it's just a really cool like this has like a spinny thing on the back of it so you can hold it in your palm when you're turning you can kind of press it up against your palm like that and it just makes turning this like super easy let me see if I can prove it and get a better view for you is this good footage unscrewing the back of our manual switch <laughs> so I don't want you to be intimidated by doing this it's one of those things that if you cannot be intimidated by it, your life is going to get so much better. Your life's going to get so much better because you can buy these sorts of things. You can buy these grow lights and you can cut these switches off and you can just replace them with something that's just a basic like on off switch. You don't even have to do that. You could just take the switch out and connect the wires back together, but then you'd have to, you'd have to like shrink wrap them and make it look all nice. This is just a nice way to kind of have everything organized and you'll have you a nice little on off switch. It's really easy to use. I'm gonna show you in just a second. We're gonna get even up close with that camera back there. I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the camera, but inside of there, on one side of these screws, these screws right here are gonna be the ones that we're gonna be unscrewing and putting our wires into. On one side it says N, that's neutral, and on one side it says L, which is line, or at least I think that's what those mean. And um, the line, the, the real important part is to just make sure that you have your hot wires and your neutral wires all on the same side. So we wanna make sure when we, when we actually cut that off and we open that up and strip those wires out, we're gonna see a black one and we're gonna see a red one, I think. 
And um, we're gonna just make sure that's what we're gonna actually connect into these screws right here. It's as simple as that. We're just gonna unscrew these things. We're gonna strip that wire, which we're about to get to. That's gonna be the hardest part. That's gonna be the most stressful part of this whole experience. But then after, once we've got that done, you'll just simply um, look in, you'll unscrew these and I'll show you how to screw the wires in and everything. But I just wanted to point out that that's how you identify what side goes on what. As you'll see right down on the bottom there, it's gonna be a little bit different on all the switches, but really what you're looking for is you're looking for your neutral side or your black side or your, your side that it doesn't have electricity in it. And then you're looking for your positive side, your line side, your um, you know, power inside, the one that actually is carrying the electricity in there. Okay, so now that we've got all that done, we've got that broken apart. A couple more tools would be probably in here. It's been a while since I've done any sort of electronics project. I was working on my on this whole LED thing and I've kind of, I don't know, I've put it on hold for the time being just because I just haven't been motivated to do it. And that's okay. I'm learning to go with the tides of when I'm motivated to do things and when I'm not motivated to do things. What I'm looking for is our wire strippers. So we'll need that. And if I've got a pair of scissors, it will be super helpful. But I don't. So, like I said, this is the most stressful part of the whole process. The reason that this is the most stressful part of the process is because this is the part that you're gonna say, oh no, I've done it and I've broke my, this cost $60. I have broke my $60 terrarium. But don't worry, you didn't break it. Be confident, take your knife. Oh man, oh. Don't do that when you cut it, but cut the wire off of that sucker. What we're doing is we're cutting the switch out of here because we don't want this dirty, stinking switch ruining our project anymore. So now we've got these two ends cut off. We've got this switch cut out of the middle. You can almost see it at this point. I don't know if you can see in there. There's a red wire and a black wire. So we've got to get those exposed. I'm gonna use our little strippers here. I wanna get a little, a bit of wire on each side. So it's kind of, these aren't very good strippers, by the way. Sometimes I find it's easier to just use a knife like that. If you cut this part off a little bit wrong, it's no big deal either because you can always just cut a little bit more of this, um, you can always just cut a little bit more of the sheathing off or whatever. You don't have to, just because you cut the wire at one position doesn't mean you can't just cut a little bit more of the wire off if you screw it up is what I'm trying to say. Now you can clearly see that we've got our red and our black wires. So we want to strip those off as well. So we've got our two wires exposed. We've got to do the same thing on the other side. I'll do that in just a second though because right now I want to show you how we're going to do in the inside of the strip here. So again we've got our L, we've got our N on one side the most important part is to just make sure that the black stays on one side and the red stays on another side. This is basically just acting as an on, as like a, as a switch, exactly what it's called. So basically when this is off, it's making sure that these two wires that are on this side and the two wires that'll be connected on this side, it's just disconnecting them. The wires will no longer be touching in the middle here or the metal that's carrying the electricity won't be touching. And then when you turn it on, it'll connect these things and it'll start shooting electricity through that just like, just like normal. Well, we do lose the dimming function when we cut the switch off. Unfortunately, it's just one of those things. If you want to get your own sort of dimmer, you could always, you know, kind of bring that functionality back. But I usually like to leave it on 100% anyways, because I find that, you know, the lower dimness levels is just doesn't make it look as good. So, so it doesn't, so it doesn't really bother me. But if you wanted to be able to dim yours, you'd have to add some sort of a dimmer in there as well. Now I'm just going to loosen all of these little screws in here. Just want to, we don't want to take this screw off completely, but you know, just kind of raise it up a little bit. Loosen it up. You want to stick it in there. You can twist up the end a little bit if you want and fold it. Okay, and then on our L side, where it says L, put the red. You want to stick the wire down in there. Can you see that the wire is stuck in there? And then when you get holding it, Screw that down, not too tight, just tight enough. 
and then do the other side with the black and then screw it down tight but not too too tight if you screw it too tight you'll uh you'll cut through the wires and you don't want to do that of what we're going for here Ooh, that was kind of magical pulled off my black sheathing right along with it I'll do one of the screws right here too, just so I can be closer to you. I love when I say things and they rhyme. It makes me feel so clever. Just the same way that uh, being confident enough to replace these switches and making our terrariums work with our automated stuff like Google Home and Alexa and all that has made me feel more clever as well. I think that's why I like all this stuff, really. I mean, it's those moments, right, that make you feel clever? Isn't that what life's about? I don't know. But now it's time to put our money where our mouth is. It's time to plug this thing back in and uh, hope for the best and hope that we've, got a, that we've got a working switch here. There's really no way to test it besides what we just did. So you're seeing, you're seeing it with me. Hopefully if we did everything properly, if we did everything properly, when we click this switch, that terrarium will illuminate. Get a good view from, the, from far away. I don't know which one I'll use. Let's see. It works. It works! Whew! That's how easy it is to switch out to remove this junky old crappy timer that again, you know, is not that crappy in and of itself. It's just annoying because it doesn't work with Google Home or any of that other automation stuff. That's all you gotta do to improve your life in massive, in a massive way. Next time you're hating on those stupid Amazon switches just like this one, well just remember that all you gotta do is you gotta go and you gotta buy one of these and do a little bit of work, barely any at all. You can watch this video again and remember how to do it. It's super, super simple. And usually these packs of switches will come in like two or sometimes even four so that if you mess one up or if one doesn't work, you'll have another one to try again with. It's just that simple. Thank God that actually worked because that was gonna be, not only was it gonna be embarrassing if it didn't actually turn on when I flicked that switch, but I was, uh, I was secretly gonna be pissed off because I had wasted this entire how long we been recording? 26 minutes all I've wasted of my life if that hadn't worked. Not to mention all the anxiety of having to go and reorder the switch and do all this all over again. Sometimes you just gotta be, uh... but you know what, I, I knew it was gonna work out. I knew it was gonna work out right from the beginning because it's just, it's that simple. Don't be afraid of this stuff, do it. I mean, don't, don't be afraid of it. Just do it and not be afraid of it.